In today's video, we're going to be making an amazing blood orange hopped mead. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm excited to share another video with you guys. I have been on a conquest to make some, of course, amazing meads, but to kind of create some standards of my own brew house. So I did a passion fruit dry hopped mead and I wanted to kind of experiment with a blood orange um, hopped mead. So what we're doing today, I'm using this big bad boy here. This is a large mesquite traditional that I made. I used mesquite blossom honey from Dutch Gold. I'll put the recipe here to let you know. I have pulled a gallon of it out. Um, and of course this I will rack into a different um, carboy that doesn't have as much headspace. Anyways, not worried about that. We're taking this one right here and transforming it into an amazing mead. Before we go too far with this, uh, let's taste just the mead as it is. Oh, that's fantastic. One of my favorite things about this one is uh, it's a pretty high gravity mead or pretty high ABV. It's at 13.125%. It started off at 1.100. Uh, gravity, which means, of course, you know, 13.125. Anyways, it doesn't taste like that. It doesn't taste like there's a lot of uh, alcohol in it, which is a little bit dangerous, but kind of nice. It's very smoky. It keeps the floral flavors, which is what I like, or what we need, but it does have that smokiness. One thing I thought about with smokiness is actually blood orange. If you, uh, in my opinion at least, blood orange has a smokier flavor to it, a grilled-esque flavor, kind of like a boche. So what we're using today is the blood orange flavoring from Amaretti. I understand that I can go out and buy blood oranges. However, I don't want to deal with the actual fruit in this case. And I just so happen to have the flavoring. So I figure I might as well use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to be adding our flavoring to this uh, carboy right here. And then we'll put our hops. I'll talk about, that, about those in a second. Let's uh, add all of our flavor into this thing real fast. So uh, give me one second. Okay, I added 1.2 ounces of this flavoring. This whole thing, eight ounces is graded to flavor uh, five gallons. So depends on the Amoretti, uh, on the flavor actually, but 1.2 is just enough to flavor this to the blood orange side. You get the blood orange taste to it, but you don't have, you don't lose the honey character, which is the most important part of a mead. That, ooh, I like that. This thing is not stabilized, which means that uh, that could start fermenting again. It probably will, and that is okay. Uh, when I just stirred that up, the yeast actually kind of, well, I should say it degassed some. So that could have been yeast activity. That could have been just degassing of the mead itself. Anyways, let's go ahead and now add our hops. So what I'm going to do here, using my same scale, this, these are um, a Zaka brand hops. And the uh, aroma side of them says mango, papaya, orange, grapefruit, lemon, piney, spice, pineapple, spicy. And it's, uh, normally these are for beers, however, this is going into a mead. So let's go ahead and add I like to try and traditionally add about a half an ounce of hops and I put them in like a little pellet bag. I'll show you. Okay, so I normally make a little bag like this. You can see here, this is basically just a, a Tootsie Roll of, hop, of hops. And so what I'll do with this is actually take and put it straight down into here. And uh, I did, um, I'm not too worried about sanitation of the, the cheesecloth that I'm using, um, but I did go ahead and stabilize, or not stabilize, uh, sanitize it before I put it in. So I'm gonna put this in just like that, boom. Then we're gonna stick an airlock on and I have no idea how long that will take to impart flavor, but we'll, t we'll find out. Here's one really important thing about hopping a mead. You need to be tasting it actively. So what I'm gonna do with this one is uh, I'll put my airlock on it and I will be tasting it probably every 12 to 24 hours to see if it's hoppy enough of a flavor. I want the blood orange to pop. I want the honey character. Um, I want hops to pop as well, but I don't want it to be the most prevalent thing. If I left this on for two, for a week and then taste test it, there's a good chance it could be too hoppy tasting, which wouldn't be great in my opinion. So I'm gonna stick my airlock on and we're gonna come back and find out if this is 
flavorful enough if this is going to be the amazing blood orange mead that I hope it is. All right, so our blood orange hopped mead, uh, it sat with the hop bag on it for about five days. You can see here that it's got quite the like milky head at the top, and that's mainly because I think all the hop stuff has risen to the top. I will give one little tip for you if you do this. Um, when you make your little hop bag like I did, make it a little more thin because I had a really hard time pulling this out of the air, or of the gallon carboy here because it was just so compact. So I'm gonna go ahead and rack this off and then we're gonna do a taste test. I don't wanna do a taste test and get this top part because I think it'll be extra hoppy. So let me rack this over real fast. All right, so here's what's left in the bottom of this. Again, that's stuff that we didn't really wanna get. It's pretty murky, probably a lot of hops. I got a little bit of it in here and that's namely because literally about a minute before I started this video, I was trying to fix my auto siphon, my small auto siphon, and I broke half of it. So uh, I have having to use a jerry rig system and it kind of messed up. Anyways, let's taste test it. Ooh, it's very, um, it's got a nice mix between uh, juice and mead. And I think the difference there is that, you know, in a juice, you don't really have honey. Um, but the juice, I, I get like an orange juice with like some honey warmth. And uh, there's a floral side to this for sure. It's a lot of fruitiness from the blood orange. It tastes a whole lot like, um, kind of like I'm, I am drinking orange juice. The hops are, um, are definitely not too strong, which I'm thankful for because hop flavor can be almost too overwhelming. And uh, this thing's pretty good. The funny thing about my experience with orange, blood orange meads is that I've made two of them now. Both of them have ended up being hopped in some way. So in the future, I'm gonna do a video where I side by side this hopped, uh, dry hopped blood orange mead with my other one I did, and uh, I'll talk to you about those. This thing's really good though. I'm gonna let it sit for a little while longer. We'll see if it starts to clear up any. I'm not really expect expecting it to at all. In fact, if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I do wanna let it set for a little while longer, continue to age, and then we'll bottle it and we'll finish this mead. So far, it's pretty dang fantastic. It's still young. It needs some time to melt. Is it perfect? No, it's nowhere near perfect. Um, but I think with some time, it could get there. My microphone died for all of this, so I went ahead and bottled it, and um, it was a little bit unclear, mainly because the hops. I will do a taste test in the future of it. I got basically about seven beer bottles out of it, but turned out really, really good. Um, look out for a taste test in the future. Thanks for watching.